take you through Mr. Eastman's home and tell you a little bit about his life and his contributions to Rochester. We're standing in Mr. Eastman's main hallway or grand staircase area. It's one of 50 rooms in Mr. Eastman's mansion. Mr. Eastman bought this property in 1902. He leveled a seven-room farmhouse and built a 50-room mansion complete with 15 bedrooms, 13 bathrooms, nine fireplaces, and a ton of rooms for entertaining. This is Mr. Eastman's living room, and as you can see, it's a very large room, and we have it set up for entertaining because he did a lot of entertaining in this particular space, not only because it was beautiful to listen to music in. Back then, people didn't have the iPods and the stereo equipment that we have today, so music was live. This is Mr. Eastman's little library, and as you can see, he had tons of books, and uh, Mr. Eastman loved to read. This is one of his favorite rooms where you'd find him in the evening, late at night after everyone had gone home, sitting in the chair over there, the yellow and green armchair, just reading a good book by his coal fire. This was one of his favorite spots, and yet initially, when he built the house, it wasn't a little library. It actually was a receiving room. This is Mr. Eastman's billiard room. It's a room he kind of liked to hang out with his friends after work. In fact, many of the household staff would always have a fire lit in this fireplace, knowing it was the first place he was going to come as soon as he came back from the Eastman Kodak Company. He would have a drink in here, usually have a game of billiards or pool with a friend, and then eventually gather for dinner with whoever else he had invited that evening. Look at all the plants, man. I just sit there. You dead? I ain't with you. <laughs> you see, this is a pretty expansive room. Mr. Eastman wanted to have a large 
large room for entertaining and produce concerts and music house. You'll see behind that tier of plants, there's a huge Aeolian pipe organ. And believe it or not, that was Mr. Eastman's alarm clock every day. The other thing, as you mentioned earlier, all these plants. Mr. Eastman liked this room and had plants that grew almost two stories tall. I think he kind of modeled this on some of the hotel lobbies that he stayed in when he traveled around the United States and Europe. He liked the expanse, he liked the solar heating and energy he got from the solar panels here, a lot of natural light which helped the plants to grow. The other thing I need to mention is, of course, this huge elephant. You can't leave this conservatory without talking about him. That is a reproduction of the same elephant that Mr. Eastman bagged and brought back from Africa on his second trip in 1928. Now, Mr. Eastman's trophy wasn't a perfect one. It only had one ivory tusk. So he had it mounted and displayed below the trophy, but then he had two fake wooden tusks put in and put into the trophy on the wall so it looked like a perfect specimen. This is the uh, original projection booth of the Dryden Theater which seats 525 people out in the audience out there. There's a balcony in this theater, which was typical of the, almost every theater in Rochester in the old days. Most of those theaters are gone, and they've been replaced by newer theaters. The balcony would let people sit up above, and they'd be looking straight out at the picture, where today you have the, the, what they call stadium seating in the, at the Regal and the Cinemark, where actually there's no balcony, but they, you know, you've all been in those where they, they sit diagonally like that and still get you out. Uh, people do like to sit in the balcony when they come here, yeah, just because they don't have that experience in other places. But the original projectors that were built, that were installed here in 1951 when the theater opened, uh, the mechanism is all original, the only part that's new. Uh, there's a thousand watt bulb in this projector here. I don't have it on right now just because of the noise. But that light will go through there, through the projector mechanism, through the lens, through the film, and through the lens, and out onto the screen. And what the lens does is make it sharp. Heads or tails? Tails. Hey, life is going on for you in the same old way. Okay, everybody, welcome to the Discovery Room. This is the one room in Mr. Eastman's house where you can actually touch things. You'll notice there's no ropes in here. This room was designed so that people could come and explore ideas around George Eastman House collections. And if you look around the room, you can actually see each one of these collections has a station or a place where you can go to learn more about them. So we have our photography, and literally it's that idea of a picture's worth a thousand words. You can see some pictures from our collection and see the timeline there to learn a little bit more about what happened when. You can check out some old time photographs. You can actually touch the ones that used to be around even before digital photography. Behind me we've got cameras and technology. So that idea of cameras, all of the different equipment that you would need in order to make a photograph, but also in our technology collection we've got motion pictures.
The George Eastman House was founded in 1947, oh. and uh, the museum, it's, I think a lot of people don't quite understand, but when Mr. Eastman uh, was alive, he was a great philanthropist. He founded the United Way in Rochester. He founded the Eastman Theater, the Eastman School of Dentistry. He gave tons of money to the University of Rochester. He was very concerned with uh, education and with making Rochester a center of education and a cultural center as well. So when he, during his lifetime, he gave a lot of money away and he was a, a great philanthropist and at his death he gave away the rest of his money. And the museum, the house, his mansion was given to the University of Rochester and it was given with an endowment and it was meant to be used by the presidents of the university to live in. And they did for about 10 years and then it became too much to keep it up and they gave it back to Eastman Kodak Company. And there were still, at that time, uh, the men who were leading the company had all worked for Mr. Eastman, they'd all known him, and they felt that the best thing they could do was to set up a lasting memorial to him, and then they created the International Museum of Photography and Film at George Eastman House, and that's when the museum was in, incorporated. Mm -hmm.